Hello. Yay, there's somebody here already. Sorry, I'm trying to set up this. Um, I'm having setting up issues. Let's see. Can you see me? No! If I was an organised sort of person, I would have done this earlier. Um, but I'm not, so I didn't. So, bear with me. Hello, I can see there are two people. Whoops, sorry. I've got to sort this out because it's um, we've had a lot going on. Oh, one of the little black lambs is lame. Oh no! Asha, can you give me a hand for a moment, please? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Hi, Rach. Who else is here? Right, try that. Yay, now I can see other people. Hello, my little bit of peace. Okay, right, so. If this is there, like that, and then if that is tightened... If you want to make it that way, you just move one underneath. Whoops! <laughs> Too much. I don't know. Uh, sorry, people. I know. I have an idea, Asha. Yeah. Right, you hold that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not holding it for the whole life. You stay there for the whole time, baby. God, you still can't see my head. Oh, I don't know. It's all gone weird. You can't see my head. You'll just have to be a talking pair of boobs. <laughs> just draw, draw eyes. But you need some wobbly eyes to put them. <laughs> no. Right. Will it, will it go any higher? As in like this. Oh, yeah. Yes, dear. Uh, the top one, I think, maybe. I'd. And sorry, everybody. The very, very top. Spin the bit at the top. Right, there we go. Okay, right. We might be getting somewhere, everybody. Oh dear. Zoom out. Um, that's a zoom in or out as I get. Can you check the zoom out, actually, and make sure that's... No, that's, that's, it. that's it. it. Doesn't You don't get to zoom. Okay. Right. Um, this is not working. It, okay, just... You've got... Look, you can see your note. It's your... No, right. Put it on the floor, and I'll just have it straight, looking at me straight. Okay. So, oh yeah. <laughs> it's very complicated. <laughs> yeah, now now we're just looking at the table. <laughs> that, that right, can it go down a tiny bit? Go down one click. Back a bit. That's it, it's a click. So it's, oh, well, there. Uh, Perfect, stay, stay. Right, now tilt it that way. Tiny bit, that way. Perfect, yay. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Um, I will do my best to be able to read comments. Ah, oh, dear. Right. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Exactly. I'm hoping that this is going to be okay. We just had um, <laughs> we <laughs> had this really big IBC tank. Uh, how much water do they hold? A thousand liters. A thousand liters. One right? ton. It's one ton of water uh, in this big plastic square thing and <laughs> hi Susan I think that's Susan sorry it's so far away it's difficult to read um anyway this uh, this water tank was in a trailer and we filled it up with water and Asha was just pulling it with the tractor up the hill and we moved about in fact no I don't think it even just moved it literally the trailer just fell to pieces so then we had to sort out water, and then somebody came up with a big um, telehandler and uh, got it work <laughs> moved the, the tank for us up into with the lamb, uh, in with the sheep in the lambing barn. And then we had to catch one of the lambs because he's limping, so his foot's been dealt with. So he should be fine in a day or two. Right, having now fiddled around with that and actually got this going, I'm now down to just one viewer. Sorry, people. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. Who's here? Let me know who you are, please. Just so I can see. Right, so. Now, I've got a few different types, different breeds of sheep fleece here. Um, this one is, uh, I know Asha's going to correct me. Clean. Near enough. Clean. Oh, it's Susan. Oh, no, you're here as well. 
Hello. <laughs> yeah, I do know what to do next time. Okay, this is a Welsh breed of sheep called uh, Sheen. L L E Y N is how it's spelt. Um, and this, these can actually be used for spinning this this particular fleece. It's not really very long in, the, in long staples they call it. So you know, the bits of fibre are only about two three inches long, whereas some you'll get as many as eight inches long. Um, it's, it's a little bit coarse, you can use it um, for clothes, but to be honest, if it's something that's going to go next to your skin, you'd probably actually, yeah, you'd want to blend this with something else that's a bit softer. Um, I happen to have quite a lot of this because a friend of ours, where we used to live. Hi, Samson Farm. Um, a friend of mine where I used to live, live had a few of these cleans and um, we would go and help um do the shearing in return for getting some fleece so i have quite a few of these now this one what i actually what i did with this was an experiment uh, to see whether or not you could get a fleece that was usable if you just put the fleece in the washing machine and when i first got it out it's it's very fluffy as you can see but it's it's not it's not like this one which is you know nice and lovely See, it's fluffy but it's, it's in little short bits that is partly because the coat itself isn't that long um, but also partly because i put it in the washing machine um now this is going to be perfect for my rugs that i make but if you want to be making clothes things like a baby blanket you don't want to use clean this breed you don't want to use that at all um they're not quite nice sheep though but they are they're on meat they are a meat breed so high range uh, my aunt's always made itchy jumpers. Yeah, well, that or Texel, that's very popular. Um, they're really not good fun. I've got Texel. So when he's... Uh... Did we get sausages fleece last year? I think so. I can't remember. Yeah, I think we did. He's a Texel cross, but that was his first, so it's going to be quite a bit um, nicer than usual. So, yeah. Clean, if you are making a children's toy, you could stuff it with this. That would be fantastic. I don't know why I'm wearing white when most of these are white. There you go. You can stuff it with the clean. Because it's it's really nice for that. Um, but yeah, I just stuck it in the washing machine. And it didn't felt. I thought it would felt. And it didn't felt. We washed it and then dried it in the tumble dryer. Um, so it's not properly felted. You could pull it and spin it. So yeah, you could mix it with something. It's got quite a nice thing to it when you pull it apart. Um, this is how they grade fleece. Oh God, I need some longer pieces. This is how they grade fleeces. They pull a bit. Well, certainly they used to before it was mechanical. You pull a little bit and you spin it. And this is where it comes in your hands. And this is where the term comes spin to spin a yarn as into you know tell a tale sort of story because once you've spun it you pull it apart like that and you listen for the sound and if it makes a really nice ping sort of sound then you know it's really really good quality whereas this one it's quite nice but you can feel that you can hear the fibers pulling apart uh, it's a bit of a slower it's, it's not a straight away ping i don't know what i've done to my face there but it's bright red Goose. Goose? Flapping his wings yeah, goose flapping his wings at my face. Don't ask. So, that's the clean Welsh breed, L-L-E-Y-N. They are a meat breed, but also being Welsh, they can live out all year. Um, but also because where they live, five people watching, I know, it's fantastic, isn't it? Um, because of where these live, because they're used to living um, on the hills and mountains in Wales, which has pretty bad weather but not quite as bad as Scottish weather but it's not far off <laughs> um, because of that they are a really really hardy breed uh, they are a meat breed they're not a small breed they're not a tall breed they're in the middle hardy barstools yeah that'll, that's a good way of putting it okay next one I have is white face Dartmoor um, I bought this off a lady and I was told that it was washed. 
not really sure how she washed it. Um, it's not really a great, great samples of them. Um, but she hasn't carded it, she's brushing it. So, white face Dartmoor. It's a little bit curly. And the length, see how long the fleece is there? So this is a nice long coat. This was probably, because of how long it is, a first um, a first time the sheep was shorn. And some smaller ones. I think she's probably actually just mixed a few in there. So what we've got, that's about four inches long. So that's how generally how long each piece is going to be. Four inches. I've got some which are longer. So they may have actually come off a different sheep. And I think she just put them all in together and just grabbed like, the amount that I asked for. Um, so yeah, it's nice. It's got, it's a bit wavy. It's a bit, it's softer than the clean. I have trouble feeling things with my fingertips because my nerves are sharp in them. Um, yeah, so it's softer than the, than the clean. Uh, I'll put it apart like this. You can see it is, it is quite nice. It's quite a little bit wavy. So this, the white face start more they do blend really really well with other types it's not the first fleece off the, the sheep for its first time it's shorn the first fleece would be really really nice and soft because uh, the first fleece is always softer it doesn't matter which breed of sheep you've got so the first one would be a lot softer you could I suppose if you could blend an older sheep with a younger sheep's fleece and that would work really really well with this with the white face Dartmoor so it's quite a nice it's quite nice I've just pulled it apart a little bit just so you can see it a bit better so yeah it's they're from Dartmoor they Dartmoor is moorland so very windy probably wet a bit as well uh, there's a reason it's not been built on because it's not really suitable for building and really. And the werewolves, yeah, of course, the werewolves of the Dartmoor. No, they, don't, they aren't really. Absolutely. Remember, thumbs up, people. Thank you very much. So, again, if we spin it, spin a little bit in your fingers, wrap it around. That's a, a more of a sort of pinginess to it than the lean had, which, again, means it, it's, it's a better quality. But the only thing that really makes it a better quality is because Dartmoor is further south, uh, well, sort of over a bit and everything from Wales, and it doesn't get quite as bad weather as Wales does. So the Welsh hill sheep will always be pretty scratchy. But white faced Dartmoor, people tend to buy this for the locks because they're wavy and they tend to make, um, just sort of put little odd bits in their. Um, when they're spinning their yarn so what you'll end up with is a straight yarn with little wavy bits every now and then sticking out and they are quite often this one the white face the white face dark wall so it is quite nice um i would have liked the lady to have washed it a bit better but yeah it's okay it's 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 quite a nice one it's not something i would want personally to wear next to my skin but I have very sensitive skin. You can tell by my face being red right now. See you later, Asha. Right, I was going to mix these up, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to the sheep first, and then I've got some interesting ones, uh, such as flax, which is made. Which auntie? Oh, sorry, are you asking me or somebody else? I don't know. Um, I've got silk there, I've got flax, I've got alpaca. So. We do all the four sheep ones first. Now this one is Herdwick and they're commonly known as the dirty sheep because of the colour. See it's it's not white, it's not brown, it's not grey, it's not black, it's they they do call, call them dirty sheep is what they're known as just because of the colour. This is a bit more grey than it's looking at the moment in there. Um, yeah so Herdwick they're really really hardy sheep they're sort of a lot of them are in scotland um and they are very very hardy sheep so because they're hardy and they live out and all of that though they are popular throughout the entire country 
but because of this, they are used for um, a lot of the tweeds. So if you imagine a tweed jacket, I, if you've never felt a real tweed jacket, I can tell you now it's scratchy. It is. Um, I can't wear them really because they, they drive me nuts. But they are quite scratchy because it's really, really coarse. It's very good um, if you want a tweed because it's very hardy. It's very, um, it's a long lasting fleece. It will last absolutely forever. If you make something out of this, it will last a long time as long as your process of making it has been has been right. Uh, so for a long, long time, these the Herdwick has been used for making outdoor wear, such as uh, gamekeepers, shooting clothes, um, that sort of thing. They use a lot. It's used a lot up here as well, up on the islands, North Scotland. There are quite a few Herdwicks. It's quite thick. So if I just try and do my little spinning bit, don't know which colour it looks best on, little spinning for them full. That actually has quite a sharp ping to it. So it is really, really good quality. It's very, very, how can I put it? It's, it will last a long time, but it's very, it is very, very hardy fleece. Um, if you mix it with softer things, it can be absolutely fantastic because it gives you the hard wearing of the Herdwick mixed with the softness of whatever it is that you want to put it with. Um, now these sheep, you'll see a lot of photos of them. Sustainable? I guess that's one way to put it. I think hard wearing is just, uh, <laughs> just as good. I think there's a bit of a lag at the moment from other things I've seen. Um, yeah, so this will this will last a long time. It's very, very hard wearing. It's really, really warm. It's very good if you want to make something that is water, pretty much waterproof without having to put anything else over it. Um, like most waterproof materials these days, you know, they've, they've got some form of something over the top of them. Whereas tweed, you don't need to do that because it's natural like that. The fibres are naturally very waterproof and Herdwick is just, just like that. It's really, really good. But if you try and pull it through your fingers like that, you can sort of feel it burn fingers, you know, like a Chinese burn kind of thing. It's that coarse. That's how, that's the level of um, of coarseness it has to it. But Herdwick's, um, lovely sheep. I love them. They're very pretty. They start off sort of quite dark, a bit, bit darker than that colour, really. Um, and every time you shear them, they get lighter and lighter in colour. But again, with Herdwick's, the first fleece is always the softest. This is not the first fleece. If you wanted specifically to use Herdwick's, to so use a tweed type thing, um, but you don't want the scratchiness, I'd definitely look out for a first fleece from a Herdwick. However, you don't get a lot. Um, on the first fleeces, they're all going to be the same. Hi, Heather. On the first fleeces, they're all going to be roughly the same colour, roughly about this sort of grey colour. As the sheep gets older, the coat gets coarser, but it gets whiter. So if you're going to be dyeing it, you can't really use the first fleece. Um, I mean, you can if you're going to use chemical dye, but if you want to use a natural dye, don't use a Herdwick for a first fleece. What I do, though, for making rugs, Herdwick is very good for that because it's nice and strong, it's very hard wearing, it's sturdy. You can walk on it over and over again and it should last a very long time. The next one, so we've done the Clean, which is a Welsh breed, the Dartmoor, which is sort of, and it hides dirt. Exactly, it really does. But again, that's why these sort of, that's why tweeds are dark colours, so it hides dirt after you've been out you know all day in the fields you're probably going to get muddy certainly are up here in the winter so we have this one from wales clean dartmoor which is sort of southwest herdwick which is generally scotland the next one we have is shetland which is north scotland um, so yeah, like Shetland ponies, you have Shetland sheep, and just like Shetland ponies, 
they're really small. Oh, is it your internet? <laughs> you're the closest person to me. <laughs> you're the one who's lagging. That's quite funny. <laughs> so, Shetland Fleece. I love Shetland Fleece. It's, it's not as coarse as the clean. It's not quite as soft as the white face Dartmoor. Definitely softer than the Herdwick. It is quite a nice soft fleece, despite the fact that Shetland obviously come from the Shetland Isles, which is even further north than me. Um, but because of where they were, they've been used a lot longer for the fleece. Uh, all of these others are all a meat breed. The Shetland is a meat breed, but it's not very big. Um, I mean, my little, my two little black boys, um, they're, one is a Shetland, one's half Shetland. So that's why they're really small. They're fully grown and they're quite small. So this one is really, it's soft in that it, it's very bouncy. It's got a lot of bounce to it. As Shetland sheep have, as Shetland ponies have, the fleece also has a lot of bounce to it. If I put it sort of next to the Herdwick, if I pull them both apart, a bit and because these are about the same amount and if I squish them up like this they're both as small as each other and then open them up you see how much more bounce fur fluff air is in the Shetland compared to the Herdwick um, I mean Shetland sheep they're, they're very cute they're very adorable they can jump uh, <laughs> they will find a way out of anywhere that you put them but they're so cute so this is not a first fleece and that's why it's got a little bit of coarseness to it if you can get a first fleece off of shetland it's lovely and soft i've got that this year with steve this the shetland's really fluffy heather um steve and teddy is their first year um being shorn this year so I will have their first fleeces and I already know from obviously handling them every day and yeah I've got fleece in my mouth now from handling those boys every day and everything I, I can feel that they're softer than this um so I do I do love Shetland fleece it's very nice you can make clothes out of this you can make something that goes next to your skin if you've got sensitive skin, you'd probably feel it. So you'd probably want to mix a little bit of something else in with it. Um, but if you haven't got sensitive skin, this is a good. Shetland is a really good fleece to use. So I do like that. Next. Oh, okay. We're going with dew retted flax. And um, flax is a plant. So that's all the sheep done. Flax is a, is a plant. Uh, it's mostly, bizarrely, grown in Ireland. And what flax makes is linen. So when people say they've got Irish linen, it is because, and it's so good, and it's well known around the world as being the best. If you look at that, it's shiny. You see the shine from it. It's absolutely beautiful. This is dew retted, which is just part of the process, um, because with flax, you grow the plant for three to four months. Um, I did know exactly. I actually watched a video on it the other day, but I can't. My brain says three months. No, that doesn't sound right. I think you grow it for about three and a half months. Um, then you pull it up. You pull it up from the ground rather than just breaking it off. And then when you've got it into like quite small bundles, Instead of leaving it on the ground to dry like you would for um, things like straw and, and hay and everything, with the flax, you bundle it up and you either leave it out on the ground and the dew in the mornings is what they call ret they're retting it. it. Essentially, it's a form of rotting, but it's not rotting. It's, it destroys the outside, but it, do but it doesn't destroy the fibres on the inside. Um, Guinea pigs, shush. God, it's not sheep, it's guinea pigs. So I've lost my train of thought now, piggles. So this is left for around about two weeks um, for the 
the husk on the outer side, like like straw, um, to sort of dry out. Well, not dry out. It's 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 a type of rotting, as I said, but it means that it's a lot easier then to actually get the fibre, um, and then you have to the outer husk and these long pieces that are like hay or straw. You break the outer husk, and this is what's on the inside. Is this beautiful fiber? And dew retted gives you a a little bit of a darker color. It's a bit more grey than it's looking on the camera there. But you see the sheen on it; it's absolutely beautiful. Um, that's it. It almost ferments, or sort of ferments. Yeah, you're right, Heather. My brain is not with it today. It's been one of those days. <laughs> I sat down about 20 minutes ago and went, I need to charge my phone, I need to do all of this. Um, so, flax is, flax is a pain for me to deal with because my hands are a bit dry at the moment. Um, it's lovely, really, really nice, nice fibre, got a lot of sheen to it. If you've ever felt actual linen, um, so your linen and that sort of thing, it's really soft, it's really lovely, and this is this is so nice, it's so lovely. If you want to be really, really luxurious, and I've tried this, um, you blend it in with silk, and that is you get the sheen of this and the silk together, and this is this is really strong stuff. I can't do um the ping test by my ear, the spinning ER, I can't do that um with Dew retted or any retted flax. Yeah, also the other way that they do it um, is they bundle them up and then they put them in river water um, or rain water. It's just got to be a water that's not, you know, come out of, that's not got chemicals in or anything. Um, and they leave them in either a river or in a bath sort of thing that's just full of this water. The water's cold. Um, and if they leave it in there, it does the same process. It sort of ferments the outside. Um, but yeah, I can't. <laughs> I've been cutting this up. All of the others, like this, and I've been sorting some out. Hello there. Sorry, it's disappeared and I can't see who it is. Mrs. Soap Peddler's Home says, oh, I love the name. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm a fiber nut too. Hello, welcome for the first time. I don't believe I've seen you before. You want to grow some flax in the garden? You don't get a lot of fiber out of it, but it is fantastic stuff. So, you know, if I want to just pull this, it will come apart quite easily. Whereas the flax has been an absolute pain in the backside. I can't do that. I've managed to do it here because I've been pulling at this for hours. I actually ended up cutting it with scissors, which it's a bit of a bit, you know, a bit of a terrible sin, but I needed to get some bagged up for people. So yeah, I love um, flax. I really, really do love working with flax. It's fantastic. Um, for me, for the rugs, it's really, really hard wearing, and the the part of me says yes, use it, and then another part of me says, but it is quite expensive. And making a rug out of out of flax whilst it would be absolutely beautiful probably nobody would ever want to walk on it <laughs> they're gonna guess it lasts even longer because so it's got such a beautiful sheen to it and you can dye it pretty much any color um flax takes really well i find um natural dyes are best just because natural dyes are best. um i think if you're dealing with something like flax to make linen it's normally white, isn't it? Spins. Rolf, yeah. Um, yeah, you can get... The, there's a different colour between this duretted flax and I can't remember the term they use for the other type of flax. So if ever you're buying flax, ask them if it's duretted or not. And I just pond rested or something like that i just i can't remember it but i love it i really love working with flax i've spun it uh, i've woven with it it's really nice and it's got such a nice feel to it i mean if if you just go and feel 
um, a proper 100% linen sheet, you know, bed sheet. It, there's a reason that everybody wants it in their beds. There's a reason it's so expensive. It's because it is really quite luxurious. Um, this bag, uh, I mean, did have a little bit more in it. Um, this bag, I, I think, cost me about £7.50 plus postage. You can spin it, but need a different type of machine. Well, I'll spin it with mine. Love crafting and all things. Oh, I do too. I've just got so many things. Um, I've spun it on my little spinning wheel. Um, yeah, you'll find it a lot, actually, Heather, on Etsy. Flax is, is quite popular. Um, a lot of it comes from over here. It's, very, it's, it's mostly grown in Ireland, over here. Uh, what you can also do, the husk that you take off it, Remember I said it's a bit like straw. That husk that comes off it, you can actually use it for horse bedding in the stable, which is fantastic. Um, so I've never used it as bedding, but it was very popular in America when I was younger, uh, about 20 years ago. A, a lot of, well, we would hear that flax was popular in America for horse stables. And it's not this bit that's on the inside, it's a waste product of how this is made. You have to try it on drop spindle. Yeah, um, if you want me to send you some, send me a message. Because I'm currently sorting out my stash because I've got loads of stuff I'm just not using. Okay, the next one. This is pretty much my favourite fibre that I can afford to buy. I'll get to the last one in a minute after this. But... So, flax. Dew retted flax is a better colour for dyeing. This here, multitude of colours, is alpaca. And it is amazing. This, if you don't have alpaca, if you've never tried alpaca, go on to Etsy and just buy some alpaca. I mean, this was, this was straight off. The alpaca straight into here absolutely right it's so super soft this black stuff i happen to know came off the neck and whilst it's shorter that is the one problem with alpaca is it can be very short unless you've got a sorry sorry s-u-r-i i think it is um type it's just like a subspecies within the alpaca you've got the short head and then you've got the sorry and this is off a short haired neck so that's as long as it is. That's it. But off the neck is the softest, most amazing feeling stuff ever. So neck, if you can, get the neck. It's normally more expensive, unless people you're buying from don't realise. We have a lot of people around here that raise alpaca and sell their fibre straight from the farm. Exactly. This has never... <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. This was, I literally got um, a pedal bin bag, white pedal bin bag, about that big. And she said, what colours do you want? I said, everything, anything, everything, I don't mind. I like alpaca, uh, crochet and scarf. It's, yeah, exactly. Alpaca is so lovely. It's really, really good for felting. It's really, really good. Do their fleeces get rougher after shearing too? You know, I, I honestly don't know. I've never asked. I've never really thought about that. Um, probably not, because they don't have um, lanolin in, in, in it either. So when you're dealing with raw fleeces, you'll get, well, actually your fingers become nice, and lovely and soft because you've got the lanolin in the sheep fleece. There is no lanolin, lan, lanolin I can't say it a lot. There's none of that in the alpaca. <laughs> I know, I need more. You can never have one alpaca. You need more than one alpaca. A friend started breeding them a couple of years ago. So once she's built her flock up, I'm I'm planning on buying a few off her. <laughs> so this, I, I love this grey alpaca. This one's really soft. No, it just stays lovely. There you go. Thank you very much for that. You know more than me. <laughs> I am not a complete beginner, but... I am very much still exploring 
everything in the world. I, I like weaving and I weave rugs, so um, I know most about those. These, most of these are just things I wanted to try. Mm, that's nice. If you want anything, um, if you want something to wear next to your skin, if you've got sensitive skin, alpaca is really good. I mean, the colour variation. There are three different shades of grey in this bit. I don't know if you'll be able to fully pick them up on camera. We've got lightest, middle, and then darkest. Can you see those? I don't know. They won't come out very well. Then you've got the white. This is off white. Well, it hasn't been cleaned. This is literally off the alpaca in a bag, came straight to me. Um, but that's really soft. This one, this one's longer, much longer than the neck. See, this is off the body. And I don't know if you can make out. Um, it's crinkly. I don't know if you can see it. But it's really nice. And it's got little crinkles all the way through it. You want to roll around in a giant pile of alpaca fur. Heather, I can understand that. <laughs> so and then we've got the dark browns they come in so many colors this one's socks are amazing yes absolutely fantastic so this is a uh, quite often called fawn color so you've got fawn you've got brown i have to ask mom if she has any left <laughs> yeah definitely um fawn got creamy colour, you've got white, you've got several different shades, <laughs> three shades of grey, and you've got black, and it's just it's just amazing. It's lovely stuff, it's so soft, it's nice to work with. The brown is lovely. I, this I didn't think I'd like the brown, but I actually I really do like that. It's a bit darker, I think, than it looks on the camera but it's so, so soft and lovely. Again, that looks like that could actually be neck because it's not very long. <laughs> no, no, well, probably more than 50 <laughs> in fibre. Shades of grey in fibre, definitely, I think. Right, alpaca is lovely. Blend it with anything, mix it with all of these, you know, the coarser ones, and it, it just adds really really nice softness to absolutely anything that you're going to make angora i don't have angora uh, not yet <laughs> i may have cashmere next year but next next uh, shearing season <laughs> um the linen uh, the flax oh if you mix flax with alpaca firstly you have to be really really good at spinning but it will be amazing um, but the alpaca is quite what they call what's heard of it, quite short staple. So you saw me, you know, saying it's it's, it's not very long. So it's, it's that's it. That's that's the length. So a couple of inches at best. Whereas if you mix it with the flax, which it it can be four foot long, three four foot long. Um, so if you're spinning flax and you add the alpaca into it. I think that will work. I've not done it yet, but I really think that will work. Um, Angora goats is actually something I'm looking into at the moment, but um, more on that if it happens, eh? <laughs> Don't want to jinx it. So that was alpaca. Okay, my last one, and clear off this table because I don't want any little grubby bits that have come out of any of the others getting into this because this is amazing what i have here this teeny tiny little packet is raw silk <laughs> yeah thanks this is raw silk um my hands i've i've purposefully been um, moisturizing my hands every opportunity i've had today because silk sticks the slightest bit of um, coarseness in your hands and you will pull the silk pieces. You'll pull it like out like a spider web. So this is silk. Um, 
short. So that is what silk looks like uh, before it's processed. I have this really, really weird thing about raw silk. Um, as I said earlier in the video, my nerves are shot in the ends of my fingers. Um, I cannot feel real silk in in my fingers, my fingertips. I cannot feel that. I don't know what's there. Um, there's not enough to set off the senses as such. And I always used to find it really funny when you know, people go, oh, I've got this, this skirt is, is pure silk. It's real silk. It cost me this much money. And I'd feel it and go, I can feel it. It's not silk. It's just something I've known since I was a teenager. I cannot feel silk. And the doctor said that's because of what's, what happened with, with my fingertips and my nerves. Um, right, so this, this silk will pull apart and if I wanted to, it's really strong, I'm really struggling, but that little piece that you just saw me have that was about that big, I can just pull it and pull it and pull it. I could make this about the size of my room because the fibres are so amazing and they stick together. Um, it's really easy actually to spin silk once you get going because you just you pull a little bit. Oops. You could literally pull like a spider's web. Uh, spider's web thread amount of silk out and it would just keep going and going and going and going and this entire thing could just be pulled out really easily then if you can see just how easily this is I'm not having I'm holding right down here I don't have to hold here you know and sort of go oh let's pull it out pull it out pull it out you can just stretch it out it is amazing. I love working with real silk. Am I going to spin it? <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> I have actually spun a little bit of silk. Um, I haven't got it here. It's, it's uh, out in the farm, in the studio out in the farm. And um, I wish I brought it in, really. Um, I spun it with Shetland. Shetland fleece, because that's quite what I call long staple. It's quite nice good length um, and when mixed with the Shetland fleece it was so amazingly soft silk just adds I mean it adds luster to it it just it looks amazing long draw yes thank, thank you I just could not remember but I mean look I could just keep going and go remember that little bag this little bag that was folded in half yeah, that little bag of silk is all of this and I can just keep going and going and going. I love working with silk, but if you're going to work with silk, <laughs> moisturise your hands really, really well. I mean, if you know you're going to be working with silk that's like this, raw silk, my honest advice is... For at least two nights before, <laughs> I'll get to the caterpillar bit in a moment uh, as to why silk's actually really unethical, but we've kind of gone past that point now anyway. Um, if, you're, if you know you're going to be working with silk, I seriously recommend that for two nights at least before you're going to do it, put a really serious moisturiser on your hands, like a, a night face cream and and overnight and put cotton gloves on and really put as much as you can on your hands and just let them soak it all up all night long and then during the day add lots and lots moisturize your hands as much as you can all through the day because otherwise like my like my <laughs> my hands at the moment I just go like that and that's just hanging off my thumb because it's you know a bit my skin's not quite 
not as soft. I mean, as I said, I've, I've been moisturising it all day and I'm still catching on bits. Um, but yeah, no jewellery also. Very, very right. Farm hands. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. So that tiny little piece that I got out of that bag, I mean, look at it. I've... I haven't even extended it by 10% of what it could be extended. That will just... That's the bag it came in. I don't think I'm... Well, let's see. I bet I will get it back in the bag. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, it's just... You just start pulling it and... It is, it is nice to spin, it's easy to spin. Got milk soap, oh, yeah, milk soap's lovely. Um, I'm gonna hopefully get out of um, my dairy goat's milk, unless she has like triplets or quads, in which case I'm getting no milk. <laughs> so, I mean, you can see, you can see it so well up against the black because it's so, it, just shines it's really lovely but look how thin that is and i can just keep going and going and going and it's still holding there's a reason silk use for parachutes it's really it, it's strong it is so strong and the minute you start using it you'll see these tiny little bits coming off and it, it is it's well magic magicians you know when they have those um those flag tricks where they pull a handkerchief or a flag out and it's going for hours and hours and hours. That's because they're made of silk. So, yeah, this, I can get it all back in there. Okay, silk worm. Now, I'm going to talk about this because if you're going to use a fibre, I think you should know where it's come from and how the animals, you know, how the animal, if we're animals concerned, have been dealt with. Um, silkworms, we all know about silkworms. Um, the silk butterfly, because it is, it is caterpillar turned into a butterfly. Silk butterflies, because they've been processed for thousands of years in China, these butterflies can no longer um, so what happens, you'll find videos of this, just look, I saw it on a programme on TV and they were just going, oh, this is how, this is how they make silk in China and it's, it's amazing and I'm like, what are they doing the butterflies? They say, oh, they're doing that so they can't fly. Um, for breeding, they will literally take a male and a female moth, because I think it's technically a moth, not a butterfly, they put them together, just like that, place them together and put them down that's it and that is their breeding um they can't fly they can't fly off they can't go anywhere when you get the silk cocoons i made sure this didn't come from there there are a few different ways to collect them um, you can buy silk balls or cocoons and they're about that sort of size and it's the it, the caterpillar is inside um and then what happens is they take that and they'll just throw it into a vat of hot water and then what that hot water then does is it allows them as you saw me do earlier pull a teeny tiny little thread like that off the silk cocoon and then once that little bit gets started, it just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. And, going. and that's how they unravel the, the cocoon, the silk cocoon. Um, but as I said, they've already plummeted it into hot water. So silk isn't really ethical in, in terms of the way that the animals... Um, you know, the life the animals have. Anybody who ever tells you that sheep are bred for their wool in this day and age knows nothing about sheep. Um, I know there are some breeds that are bred, such as in Australia and New Zealand, 
war has had a revival and so the merino breed has come back into fashion but the sheep unless you get small um small farmers like me and other other crafters yeah exactly silk's not ethical at all really um i love working with it but it's really really difficult to get any that is not dealt with by those processes i mean silk butterfly just doesn't it doesn't the silk moth doesn't fly anymore that's end of it gone and we've done that man has done that to it um yeah so anybody who tells you that a sheep is bred for its fleece and that the sheep is killed for its fleece knows nothing because even with fleeces being worth a lot of money in australia and new zealand they're still worth a lot more money for their meat. You have to share a fleece, unless it's one like a, a hair sheep, which um, it sheds its fur, its hair itself, uh, sheds the fleece itself, and you'll find little bits stuck on like brambles and um, in fences and all of that. Um, but most sheep, back in the Middle Ages, I mean, in, in the 1500s was when wool was at its, at its peak in certainly within the uk and europe and ever since you know we've, we've been breeding back then they were breeding to get a better fleece but they also needed it for the meat so no sheep is ever killed for just its fleece it doesn't happen don't they keep the females and sell the males um if you're breeding yeah absolutely most farmers do but actually no because if, if you're breeding for meat it doesn't matter male female it doesn't matter because they go off for slaughter before they're of an age which they're going to be having babies anyway um mutton is lamb that's had some more years to live and they mutton is normally a sheep which has been a ewe that's been used for breeding and then at the end of its life it goes off that's just the way it is but you'll have got the fleece all the time off that one um australia and new zealand have a lot of merino sheep because that is really really soft and lovely fleece and they had bred that to produce so much so much fleece it's ridiculous so a merino sheep is always looks like it's got way more fleece um than any other breed and that's that's just the way it is um it's just because in in the past they've had to make the money from the fleece as well as to give it the meat for them to eat so what would happen in like 1500s and tudor times um uh, down in england and up here probably actually as well i should imagine it would be a case of the family need to eat so because the family need to eat um the males would be eaten when they've got two you know if they've got too many males you always need one for breeding obviously and you'll have to change your stock every now and then because inbreeding does not work in sheep it's horrendous um we don't eat that much meat and we tend to buy it everywhere locally around here anyway when we do um so yeah a sheep has to has to have its fleece cut off you don't find commercially um commercially available lamb fleeces the first cut of the fleece because the first year shearing doesn't happen to those that are going for meat because they don't need to um my lambs that were born uh got one who was born in march of last year he's not going to be shorn until uh june of this year for the first time so they're my two little shetlands so i'm really looking forward to getting that fleece um so no sheep that goes for meat as lamb will have ever been shorn if it's gone for mutton if it's classed as mutton which is adult lamb uh yeah adult lamb adult sheep they've normally been breeding for a few years and then they've come to the end of their life and if they're in good condition then they're sent off and processed as mutton uh flax it's a plant so the only thing really there's there's very very few predators for for this plant <laughs> there's very very few pests that cause problems 
And in Ireland, the weather's so crap that <laughs> it's, it's like living up here all the time. Um, so, you know, the, the, any pests that would eat the plants tend to die off. Um, alpaca. Now, alpaca are used for meat, but you're talking in places like uh, Brazil. So uh, some people in America, I have heard, do eat alpaca. I'm sure there'll be people in this country who would. Um, but I personally have never tried alpaca. I wouldn't have a problem with it if it was ethically raised. Hi, Carol. We're near the end, sorry. <laughs> so actually, when I'm looking around, the least ethical fibre that I have here, out of these sheep's fibre, um, I would say is the silk, in all honesty. Um, that's the least ethical. The flax, in my opinion, is, actually no, to me the most ethical are actually the sheep fleeces. Quite a few alpaca farms near me. Yeah, more like pets, exactly. I mean, if, if I had any, none of our animals here go for meat. Um, even my neighbour that has sheep in the top barn, he breeds for breeding, not you know, not to, uh, not for meat, <laughs> but he does sometimes have to sell some at auction and they'll just, they go wherever they go. Um, yeah, so there we go. That has almost been an hour. Does anybody have any questions that I probably can't answer? <laughs> so yeah, remember, Herderick, really coarse, clean, uses stuffing. Would you have them as pets? Oh, and the fertilizer, absolutely Heather. American, I don't, ah, that's just disappeared. I'll try and watch this. Um, yes, that was it, fertilizer. I was gonna talk about that as well, wasn't I? Sheep fleece. You've heard of my alpaca farms here, my area that sell for meat, it's expensive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can I spell Jew retted? I can. In fact, I can show you D E W, it's Jew, retted, se separate word, R E T T E D, flax. Is that the right way around? Can you even see it there? Is that the right way around or is that backwards? Oh, your critters are pets. When can you come visit? Anytime you like. Can you read that, Heather? It looks backwards on my screen. Is it backwards on your screen? Right, in America, yeah, use it for me, it's expensive. Yeah, I have answered that. Yep. Whee! That's lovely, so, so nice. But then again, if, if you're going to be dealing with flax, you are gonna to have to kill off some natural habitat, I suppose in order to grow it and you are going to have to keep whatever pests you have in your area off the flax otherwise you know it's not going to grow is it so actually I'd, i i do honestly believe that sheep fleece is more ethical than the flax definitely more ethical than silk because the sheep has to be shorn this this isn't a case of you do it to make money you don't um, here, certainly, um, you will get more money if you didn't shear your sheep, you would essentially save money because it costs so much to have them shorn here. It's a bit different in Australia when you've got all the big farms, have got thousands of sheep, but certainly here, most farmers are paying around £1.50 to £2.50 a sheep. Now, whilst that doesn't sound a lot, you've got to have a couple of hundred sheep for it to be that cheap and over here we have the british wool marketing board and i'm happy to say scotland's a bit less ridiculous um the wool marketing board it was made law during the 1500s basically um i know after the 1500s for about 16 1700s it was made law that all sheep farmers had to sell their fleece 
to the wool marketing board. And the reason for that was it, it was actually a really, really good marketing way of marketing. How much is a fleece now? Uh, how long is a piece of string? Uh, I've got over 20 I've been given for free uh, in one go. And I've also paid £25 for a fleece. Anybody, uh, that had to be exceptional. That That's actually an alpaca fleece, uh, a full one. You don't make a lot of money. You don't make money selling fleece. Unless, if you own the sheep, shear them yourself, wash the fleece, card the fleece, which is what's been done here, carded it to put it all in the right direction. So you've checked it, you've split up all the, um, I'll get back to the compost. <laughs> you, you, know, you make it all so it's all lying really, really nice. It's clean, it's, it's ready to spin. Then you, you dye it, you spin it, and then you sell it, you will make money. But it's still a long process. Exactly, 50p for a whole fleece, because it's not worth, they have to take, what kind of sheep have super furly fleeces? Um, you're talking about uh, Wensleydales, um, there are a couple of others, but Wensleydales is the one that's coming to mind at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean the white-faced Dartmoor has quite a curly fleece, but again, you have to realise that the first fleece is long and curly, and every fleece after that is not as good. So they're not as long, not as curly, or both not as long and curly. Dartmoor white face, yeah. Or white faced Dartmoor, generally called. Uh, right, the fertiliser, that's what I was getting to. If you can get hold of the waste fleece that crafters don't want because it's covered in poop, poo, excrement, around the back, if you can get hold of that and put that in your compost bin and let it rot down, you will have the most amazing compost you can imagine. Another way of cleaning, which somebody said, uh, I think it was Heather that maybe said yesterday or this morning, I can't, sorry, I can't remember which live it was on. Um, somebody was saying that you put the fleece in the barrel and just sort of leave it there to sort of ferment, to clean it. If you do it that way, then all the water that you have there, if you just put that on your garden or on your compost bin, in your compost bin and just allow it to all soak through, you're going to add a lot of absolutely amazing goodness to your garden. And uh, it's just because it, it's, it's a natural fibre. I mean, if I was going to put any of these on the compost, it'd be that one because the white face start more because it's just not, I don't know. I think I would struggle to actually get anything decent out of this. Um, I spent a lot of money actually buying this one and, and I wish I hadn't bothered, really. Um, so yeah, I won't do anything with that one. So yeah, compost. Fantastic for compost. I was hunting for sheep. I have lots of sheep, come up here. Absolutely. Come up, buy a sheep, keep it here. I'll look after it for you. <laughs> So yes, uh, price of the fleece, pfft, there's no idea. Fleece in the garden, yeah, from somebody in Ireland, it's very popular over there. Again, because British Marketing Board, um, I don't actually know if Ireland has the same thing. So it's not all ladies. <laughs> watching. <laughs> the ones up in my barn are also if you're thinking of mine, <laughs> not Dartmoor's. Um, I'm hoping to get a hold of some Scottish blackface. If I know I can, but I've probably got to wait now till shearing season. Scottish blackface fleece. The fleece off that bouncy ewe that's up in the barn, the uh, cheviot, as they call it. Um, I've got, sorry, something came up on my screen. It just completely. Um, yeah, so Scottish black-faced sheep, lovely long coat like that every year. But again, it's being up here, it's really coarse. Uh, the bouncy one, the cheviot, um, I'm just going to call her bounce, I think, from now on, bouncy, something like that. Um, her coat is really nice. Again, it's a long, a long one, but 
you, you can generally tell where a sheep, what the coat is going to be, what's going to feel like by looking at it and the way that it laid on that on that um you when it sort of went across like that and you know it came out and it's about that long um that tells you that they're from a very windy type of, of area so uh yeah they're good fun <laughs> i'd love to cross her i i told the farmer tonight i said oh, i might have to buy her <laughs> but i think he's got a few more breeding to do from her before he buy it <laughs> Hello guinea pigs. Yeah, we'll take your fleece off. Um yeah, so that's basically all I have to say right now. Any questions before I go? Because I've been on here over an hour and I must be boring. <laughs> uh oh, let me show you some of my weaving. Oh, oh, oh. Got this one down. Come here. This is one of the first things I ever wove. And it may look like a scarf, but it's actually not. Um, where we used to live, the kitchen and living room was um, tiny and open plan. And the fridge was all wide. And I got so fed up of seeing it that I wove this. <laughs> and then that. That actually hung down the side of the fridge for a couple of years so yeah this is lots of different colors this this is just um actually this is just cheap wool this isn't even nice fiber right i'll just be a few seconds i'm gonna go get um my favorite piece that i've ever done um and actually we'll talk about that because that's bamboo <laughs> right, bamboo. You can talk now, guinea pig. I'm back. This is beautiful. You can't actually, um, you can't really actually see it properly from over there. Let me come up closer. I'll do it this way. Whee! <laughs> I love this. Sorry if it's making your eyes go funny. That'll do. <laughs> this is mine. I love this. Weaving's fantastic. Oh, hi, hidden within myself. So I didn't see you come in. <laughs> Look, Eastern European old lady at the moment. Right, bamboo. I will talk about this. I don't have any to show you, but I have this. Um, when you know when you pick up, imagine you pick up a cheap bed set. So you know you've got like, your pillowcases, your your sheets and all of that and you know it's cheap and you pick it up and it sort of feels cheap and then if you picked up some real Egyptian cotton sheets and they would it would fall differently um, I can show you this not on cheap don't worry I'm not about to strip my bed for you right so this one which is cheap right it just like it falls and it's 
you fold it and it, 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 there's, it's like there's some resistance to it, the way it falls and it drapes and you can sort of try and make it look like it just hangs off you but it always looks like you have purposefully folded it like that. I don't know if that makes sense. Whereas the bamboo, it just hangs, it, it hangs so nicely, it hangs differently and you know you just it feels it, I can't explain to you the difference in how the, the material just hangs yeah it flows it's it's heavier it's it's not it doesn't feel heavier when you're wearing it but when you lift it up and put it down it's it's heavier and that makes for nicer a nicer shape a nicer feeling than than this does i mean you know there's nothing wrong with this one it is just cheap fiber it's it's cheap wool i got from a shop whereas this is bamboo and, and it it's softer it molds better to shapes it, it's just it's so much better unfortunately the only way you're ever going to know what i mean is if you make these yourself or you visit me <laughs> And if you ever visit and say, can I see the bamboo? I will show you the bamboo. Different fibres, different purposes, exactly. The best one I ever had was I was given a load of uh, silk thread. Um, you smell, guinea pigs. Embroidery silk. Embroidery silk, thank you, Asha. I was given a load of embroidery silk, so it was about that thick, and it was silk. And it was pretty heavy in its feel but when you lifted that up it just sat amazingly um i wove a shawl for my nan in australia uh who's in her late 80s now and i wove it for her a couple of years ago um and she loved it so much she, <laughs> she probably would because i know i would right i'm going i've been on for an hour and 15 minutes um it's been lovely talking to you all thank you so much for watching um any questions sit them down below and um i'll try and find somebody who might know the answers <laughs> good night everybody hope you've taken something useful out of this i think lots of people lost it unfortunately it, it just dropped suddenly dropped down um so, Okay, I'm going to go, everybody. Um, thank you so much for watching. It's been really nice having people. I think I had up to uh, 12 people watch me ramble about, please. I'll, uh, I will speak.